Welcome to the Shoreword channel. We're dedicated to sharing powerful, inspiring and motivational messages and sermons by men of God with you on this channel. Please sit back and enjoy today's inspiring message. God bless you. I've been talking to our audience about all these different books from Napoleon Hill, Elsa Lincoln Benedict, and Dale Carnegie, and all these people are needing all those guys. But there's one really good book that... I think most people wouldn't even consider it like a success book. They would think it's, they think it's a spiritual book. And um, one of the things I love about you is when I first started getting to know you, you come to our events and you would like do these Bible studies in the morning with people. And then you had a podcast about these things. And it was talking about the Bible, but from a different lens, not just like the spiritual side, but the actual success principles found inside the Bible. So I would love to first talk about that a little bit, like because most people don't look at the Bible as a success personal development book. And I feel like you... More than anyone, every time you pull something out, you're like, "Do you realize it says this?" I'm like, "I yeah. never thought about it that way before." So I love to hear how you how you look at the Bible's book. I think it's the ultimate success book because everything God created, He created to succeed. He created the wind to blow, it blows. He created the grass to grow, it grows. He created dogs to run and bark, and they run and bark. God made the sun to shine, and it shines. So the Bible is the ultimate success book, mm-hmm. and I think that success in itself is a spiritual outcome. I mean, even, I'm going to say something that people are going to disagree with, but that's okay. I've studied it, and they'll get a chance to catch up. Um, wealth is also a spiritual outcome, which most people don't think about that. Most people think about wealth as being materialistic, but wealth is not materialistic at all. In fact, the only reason money has value at all is for two reasons. Number one, the message it carries. Number two, the faith that it creates. A $100 bill has nothing backing it except the fact that people believe it's worth $100. So even wealth itself is a spiritual outcome. There's a whole lot of other reasons than that, but should those to name a few. Yeah, it's so interesting. So my question would be that is most people would say like, okay, so this there's this huge book. There's Old Testament, there's New book. Testament. Like where in there is the, the success principles? But I know the very first time we started talking, you were like, well, let's start Genesis chapter the one. one. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly. like, I want to, I want to like, I'd love for you to talk about that just so that somebody can literally open page number one of the Bible and, and read it, but read it through different eyes. So I'd have read it dozens of times before I talked to you about it, and then you framed it differently, and I went back, I was like, oh, the whole time it was there, and I missed it. So, like you were saying yesterday, when you were growing up, you thought bookstores were stupid, right? Yeah. So, I thought reading was like, reading was hard for me, and so therefore, it wasn't something I liked. In fact, I was 16, almost 17 years old. I was a month away from my 17th birthday. I had never read a book that wasn't a comic book or a karate book in my life. <laughs> comic and karate, I love it. And so, um, a friend of mine... After I came to Christ, he says to me, he says, you need to start reading the Bible. I was horrified. I wasn't like, I wasn't like, I was like, you mean that big, thick book with two columns, little bitty words and no pictures? I got to start reading that? It was like, uh, okay. And I started reading it, but I was blown away that even reading the Bible, King James Version, Old English, the these, the thou's, and the thou shalt not, it just blew me away how practical it was. I'm like, this is the Bible? I had never read it. I'd gone to church my whole life, but I'd never read the Bible. Now I'm reading the Bible. I'm like, it tells me if I do this, I can expect this. And if you do this, you can expect that. I'm like, okay, cool. So Genesis chapter one, there are so many success principles in Genesis chapter one. It's almost like God gave us a wink and said, if you don't get to chapter two, you're going to be okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So what do I mean by that? So the very first verse in the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So when I, when I read that, let me, let me back up a little bit. If you're going to study the Bible and you want to know what it says, you can't, you can't inject your own meaning into it. You have to like draw meaning out of it because it can only, it only says what it says and only means what it means. Right. And so in order for me to understand what it's saying, I need to like look up the definitions of the word. I need to read words. I need to read it in context and I need to understand there's a principle called the law of first mention because God doesn't change. However, you mentioned something the first time that's his original design for that thing. Okay. So that's a really quick synopsis on that part. So Genesis chapter one, verse one, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, if you read that slowly enough, you can see that God established a platform in the very first word in the very first verse in the Bible. In the beginning, that's time. God created the heavens, that's space. And the earth, that's matter. Oh, so our lives are governed by the boundaries of time, space, and matter. We can only have freedom inside the boundaries of time, space, matter. So God set up the platform. Well, interestingly enough, the first thing that God tells us about God is that he's creative. But the first thing he tells us about man, and when I say man, I'm talking about men and women. The first thing he tells us about man is that he made us in his image, which means he created us to create stuff and he made us to make stuff. So that's cool. First thing that God ever said to man when he talked to, like, first thing God tells us about God is that he's creative. 
first thing he tells us about man is that he created us in his image. And then the first thing he ever said to man was this. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Okay, cool. So how's that a success principle? Well, be fruitful. What's a fruit? A fruit is a living organism whose seed is in itself. So when God said be fruitful, he was saying to the man, you produce on the outside based on the aspect of my creativity that I planted inside of you. Okay, so, so I'm supposed to make sure what God put in me shows up outside of me. Okay, got it. Be fruitful. Well, you wouldn't say be multiply because that would be a dumb sentence. It wouldn't make any sense. Multiply is a do. It's something you do. What does multiply mean? It means to increase. So be fruitful. Do multiply. Do replenish. Replenish means to fill up. Do subdue. Subdue means to trample down. And that's kind of confusing. Why do you tell me to produce on the outside, increase, fill up the earth, and then trample? Well, because God understood something back then about success that we don't even understand 6,000 years later, and that is disruption always follows intention. When you decide to do something good, the first thing that shows up is something difficult. It even happened in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's the intention was the disruption. And the earth was, or it became without form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep. That was the first thing that showed up was disruption. And then, and this is part of the productivity secrets here in Genesis chapter 1, so you have to start with intention, but then disruption follows intention. Then the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. You have to find inspiration after the disruption follows your intention. And God said, let there be light. Now, after the inspiration, you still need illumination. You need to learn something that you didn't know so that you can see something you couldn't see, so you can do something you couldn't do before. You see, like it's it, it, it's all a function. So part of the reason I think that this happens in my brain when I'm doing this is because I can't read fast, uh-huh. <laughs> right? So because I'm reading so slowly, I'm seeing connections, and I've read the Bible a lot and have memorized a bunch of verses, and so because I'm starting to see connections between all these different principles. And so so be fruitful, do multiply, do replenish, do subdue, and then you can have dominion. Well, so if you look at the the action words in that verse, be do, 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 have. Be, do, have. That's a success formula. How's it a success formula? Because most people can't succeed because they're focused on the having. I want to have. But you can only have, rightfully, the things that you're willing to do the right thing in order to have. So what happens is we say, okay, I really want to have this, so I'm going to do this thing that I don't really want to do, but I'm going to go try to do it anyway. And then we bump our head on our insufficiency and stub our toe our insignificance. And what happens is we can't do it. Because I believe, and you probably would agree with this, I think, and even if you didn't, I just, <laughs> I just, I just said you do. <laughs> but, but I believe that every human being is already doing 100% of everything they can do who they are right now. So in order for you to do more than you've been doing, you've got to become more than you've been being. And that's the ultimate, the whole, think about it. Moses asked God, what is your name? He said, I am that I am. So God's name is being, I am. So our ultimate objective is to become more than we've been being and to become, be becoming more like God. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing in a nutshell. And so when I read that and I start applying that principle, be, do, have, don't be, can't do, can't do, can't have. Be a little, do a little, do a little, have a little. Be a lot, do a lot, do a lot, have a lot. And those are just a couple of the success principles in Genesis chapter one. So cool. I want to like, hopefully you guys are like me, probably watch this video 200 times. And I like, actually, <laughs> I want to sketch down like, Everything you said, like, slow down so I can, like, see it. I would love if you could, like, let's talk about a very practical example. So someone okay. who is an entrepreneur, they want to start a business, sure. whatever it is, and they want to be successful. How would you layer on those principles? into some? Because we know both you and I work with entrepreneurs every single day. Sure. People want to speak. People want to sell. Like, how would you take that framework and lay it on a brand new entrepreneur who's coming in trying to figure out how to be successful? Yeah. I think, I think being has a lot to do with believing, Right. You are you're going to behave like you believe yourself to be. You're going to behave in ways that are consistent with how you believe yourself to be. And what happens is people try to change their behavior but keep their beliefs the same. <laughs> I was telling some folks yesterday, you think that the people that you serve are not doing the thing because they don't know how. And so you teach them how, and then you're frustrated when they still don't do it. Mm-hmm. Because believing that you can and that you should and that you will is more important than learning how. If you, if you learn how but you don't become the person, you'll never do it. But if you become the person and you don't know how, you will figure it out. Mm. So it's all about your perceptions. It's, it's like 
money is just one aspect of success. It's not the, it's not everything, but it's certainly important, right? And I, I think a lot of people don't realize that in order for you to live the life you desire, you have to realize that you don't lack access to people say, I lack access to funding. No, you don't lack access to funding. You lack awareness of the access you have. There's a difference between lacking access and lacking awareness. And most people, they think that because they can't see something that it's not there. Well, I've got news for you. A lot of the stuff you can't see is there. And a lot of the stuff you can see is not there. And so you've got to learn to believe more in reality than you do physicality. That's why we can fly planes. You, you think about a 747. Now, this is the dumbest idea any human being ever came up with. 747. It's got four engines. It weighs fully loaded 987,000 pounds with people and fuel. That's almost a million pounds. They have to fill the tires with nitrogen because nitrogen gets cold under pressure to keep the tires from blowing out when the plane lands. And this thing can fly like three miles, five miles in the sky at five, six, seven hundred miles an hour. That thing has so much power. I mean, like, what's more powerful than 747? You know what's more powerful than 747? The invisible air that holds it up. Hmm. And see, somebody believed more in the power of the air than they did in the power of gravity. And that's why they were able to discover the principles of flight. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I got I got a little bit geeky here. But no, I do I, it sometimes. I love it. If you talk about the first thing is is understanding not the the how but like the being. It's actually interesting. I was thinking about this like how many years ago the very first time you came to Boise and we stayed in this hotel. Eight years. Eight years ago. Yep. But we, the inner circle was in this hotel. And you came to inner circle. You went to the event. And I remember years later you told me like yeah, you changed my life. And I was like, oh, what was it, what was the principle I taught you? Was it was it the funnel? Was it the whatever? Whatever. I mean, you told me it was fascinating. It was you're like, no, it wasn't any of those things. I'm like, oh, I thought, you know, I thought that was what the thing. And you're like, no, it was, it was, you put me in this room and like, I started believing in myself again and started believing that I could do it. And it was like, the shift for you was not like, here's this how to nugget you need. It was the belief in you and the value yeah. of what was already inside of me. There, there were so many people, like, when we used to do like those walk and talks, we used to do those, like, everybody shares what they do and I'd stab and share. And I was the brokest person in the room. And everybody acted like my ideas were the best ideas they've ever seen. I'm like, okay. So you created an environment in which I could discover who I really am. And I hope that, I don't know if that makes sense or not. And so what happened was I realized just by being in the room with all these high level people there that, I mean, there were kids making a, like hundreds of thousands of dollars a month back then. And now they make more than that. But I was just, I'm like, <laughs> like, why do they think my ideas are great and they're making more money than me? Well, because they knew who they were assigned to. And I spent so much of my entrepreneurial life seeking to serve the people who needed it and not the people who wanted it. Because here's the, here's the strange paradox of life. The large majority of people who need the transformation don't desire it. And the large majority of people who desire the transformation don't really need it. Mm. And that's really kind of hard for us to wrap our minds around. But it would help these people so much. But here's what I discovered. If you try to save people and you try to rescue them from themselves, it's only going to frustrate you and irritate them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's helpful. That's good. Me. So the first step in the, in the success pro process is helping people understand that like it's less initially about like what they want as much as like, who are they? Who are you becoming? Actually, how do you, so what's the best way for someone to, because I think a lot of times people get lost in that. Like they think they're a way because their whole life they've been this way, not understanding who they've actually been called to be. So let, let, let me let me say this first. Let me tell you why I believe people don't step into their true identity. Because most of our lives, we've been programmed by what I call the cultural hypnotic societal mechanism to believe in our lie identity. What's a lie identity? A lie identity is the identity that I got from all the people when I was growing up telling me that you're not. Right? All the things they told you your whole life you're not, that's your lie identity. So you, most people believe more in what they're not than they do in what they are. They believe more in who they're not than who they are. And so what they do, some people who desire to overcome that lie identity, they create what I call a my identity. What's that? That's when you create another fake identity. It's still not you, but it's bigger than the identity they put upon you. That's why you got so many people who are entrepreneurs and they're ego tripping, right? Because they, they're trying to overcome their lie identity with a my identity. It's not, you, you have to get, in my opinion, you have to get your true identity from the ultimate identity, which is God. Because he is the ultimate I am. 
In fact, even if a person is an atheist, they have to introduce you to God before they can tell you they're an atheist. They say, I am an atheist. Congratulations, you told me God's name before you told me yours. <laughs> right? And so until I realize I am who he says I am, not who you think I am, not who my parents think I am, not who my neighbors think I am, not who my boss thinks I am, I am who God says I am. And the more in line I can become with that identity, the more powerful I become because then I'm on assignment and I am doing the thing that the only human being in the history of the world can do, and that is fulfill my assignment, mm. which is the ultimate success. Yeah. Doing the thing you were created for. People say, money, okay, well, you know, let's get you a Rolls Royce Dawn convertible, $400,000 car, sit in your front yard, put a bunch of dirt in it, and plant some flowers in it. It'll be an expensive flower pot, but it won't be valuable because it's not being used for what it was created for. Mm. And a lot of people are like a Rolls Royce Dawn, and they're filling up their life with all this dirt but because it makes them money and it's not aligned with their purpose, they think they're successful. Well, you may be rich, but you're not necessarily successful. Mm -hmm. If you don't fulfill your purpose, you've wasted your life. Wow. Well, this is a harder thing to answer, but like what, like for somebody, how do they, because the light entity and the might entity is so heavy that we think that's the thing. How do you cut through that? Is it? So that's why, this is why when I teach business, Regardless of somebody's beliefs, I always teach from a biblical perspective. Mm. Because if somebody is the source of all their knowledge, then I know not only is their knowledge faulty, but their knowledge is also fake. And there's a Texas colloquialism that says, if you see a turtle sitting on a fence post, you know he didn't get there by himself. <laughs> right? And all of us, to some degree, are turtles sitting on a fence post. And so I don't want people to think that... My, I'm successful and wealthy and have a great relationship with my wife from 30, 38 years. I don't want people to think that that's the case because I'm so awesome. It's the case when I'm being awesome and then when I'm not being so awesome. It's the case because I got my identity from the ultimate identity. I know who I am based on whose I am, and I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. I believe the ultimate freedom in life is when you have nothing to hide, nothing to lose, nothing to gain, and nothing to prove. Then and only then are you truly free. So, I th and I thought you were going to ask me. So, how does a like how does a per person know what their purpose is? Well, you, I, I think what we do is we discover our purpose and then we develop ourselves for that purpose and then we deploy ourselves in that purpose. But where do we find the purpose in this place? I believe that I'm going to find mine. You're going to find yours. Everybody who's watching this YouTube video right now, you're going to find your purpose at the intersection between your passion and your proficiency. The thing you love to do and the thing you're really good at, X marks the spot. That is where you focus on pleasing God and serving people. If you will find this X marks the spot, passion and proficiency. I love this and I'm really good at this and I'm going to stay in this zone. I'm not going to get too far over here. and I'm not going to get too far over there. I'm not going to get too high or too low. I'm just going to stay right there in the sweet spot and I'm going to seek to please God and serve people. You will find a level of success that's it's incomprehensible. And it's beyond making money. It's beyond being fit and having the body of a superhero. It's beyond like having all this knowledge and you can promulgate your esoteric cogitations and articulate superficial sentimentalities. It's bigger than all of that stuff. It's just like, I'm living in my zone. I am like, like nobody can get you off kilter because you know who you are based on whose you are. And you're just living your life for the purpose of pleasing God and serving people. So when I come, when I get around Russell Russ and I, and I, I believe our relationship has always been this way. Like I'm not trying to get anything from you. You're not trying to get anything from me. Like, because nothing's missing. And there's so much freedom in that space. Yeah. So as you're talking and I hadn't thought in my head, because a lot of times we have these passions, we don't understand like why, or, and you know, immediately, especially in the short term, you're like, why did I care about this thing? Why did I go down this path? Mm -hmm. I remember I had a very vivid experience. Um, 2017, you were in the room when this happened. But um, 2017, Funnel Hiking Live, you did this big event. It was the first time we launched a coaching program. You, me, you and I were on stage, and we set this you know, huge record. And it, was, it was crazy. And then that night, we did a fundraiser to help save children from sex slavery. And we raised over a million dollars. I remember after that, going backstage and like crying and feeling this thing. And I started, and I had this like moment where I was like, holy cow, well, like 17 years prior, I was a 20 year old kid. I was in college struggling. I was like, you know, my cumulative GPA in college was 2.3. So barely passing straight, straight C's, you know, maybe one B struggling in school, wrestling as an athlete, 
didn't like to read, didn't like to study, didn't like any of that kind of stuff. And then for some reason, like there was this weird thing where I had interest in 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 marketing. I don't even know why, but it was just like for some reason, like there was a spark. And I remember listening to tell like I was on wrestling tournaments, listening to teleseminars. I would download these teleseminars, burn them on CDs. I'd listen to my little CD Walkman while we were driving, you know, to these wrestling terms eight, ten, twelve hours later. And I was so fast, I could stop thinking about it. And I was like, like why would God care that I was like? for me to like learn about marketing and, and funnels and all these things, you know, 17 years prior. And also I realized 17 years later is like, because he planted these desires in my heart, because I follow them and because I pursued them, like these experiences happened that all culminated to like, we, we raised a million dollars to help save children from sex slavery. Mm -hmm. And then I looked out in the audience, I saw all these other people and all these people were doing amazing things and they were all, and they, because 17 years ago, I had this, this weird desire to learn and go down this path. He, all these things happened later. Mm -hmm. And I remember just thinking about that and I was like, cause God didn't care that I was going to learn funnels or marketing. He didn't care that I was going to like make a potato gun DVD. He didn't care. Like, all these things didn't matter. Right. I'll show up, make a potato <laughs> gun DVD. <laughs> yeah. But because of that, I got the skill set, put me in the places, put me in the things to eventually be able to do, become the person, something like that, do the thing. Yeah. And now you have these incredible results yeah. and help, helping all these other people figure out how to be, do it, have. Yeah. It's, 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 it's just a remarkable thing when you know you're in your zone yeah. you don't have to try to be anybody. You don't have to try to be like anybody. You don't have to try to prove anything to anybody. You just do your thing. Yeah. yeah I think if anybody's listening, it's like, I think we discount sometimes like the passion or thing that we're, that we're, we're excited by. And I'm like, man, hey, I feel like those desires are planted by God to lead you in a direction. 1000. Mm -hmm. So it's like lean into those. Don't be, don't be afraid of them. Don't be, you know, fight it. Like, yeah. And, and don't, don't try to make that fit the idea of what you think somebody else thinks you should be doing. Mm. Don't be like, you can't become successful being a people pleaser. You want everybody to be happy. Everybody's not going to be happy. Some people are just like destined to be miserable. It's what it's their zone. It's what they like. Yeah. Like don't, you can't please everybody. Please God. It's really interesting. You were talking about that, about with it. God didn't care about me doing a potato gun. See, here's what, it's really interesting. There's, I think it's Psalms 37, four. It says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give thee the desires of thine heart. Most people mistakenly, I believe mistakenly, think that means that when you delight yourself in God, he'll give you what your, what, what your heart desires. I believe it means when you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give your heart what to desire. And when you desire what he desires you to desire, then he gives you what you desire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's why pleasing God is such an important part of it. And people say, well, I don't believe in God. That's okay. Even if you don't believe in him, please him anyway. Uh, and, and serve people. Everything that you desire to have that you don't have right now, somebody else has it. And if you can fix one of their problems, they'd rather have their problem fixed than the money they pay you for. Mm. And that's why we are able to do what we do and live our lives by intention instead of distraction. It's, it's a whole thing. So cool. Man, we can do this for... 12 hours and not even well, scratch. I'm already here. Chapter one. <laughs> <laughs> so, but like, the thing I wanted, hopefully you guys get this from this video is there's so much truth in these places that we're not expecting it. Right. I see so many people who will fight against, I'm not going to the Bible cause I'm not, I don't I'm not religious. I'm, I'm religious. not religious. In God. I don't believe like, right. they, they always have a reason. It's like, do I understand like truth is truth, like principles that, that matter. And like, and again, I started looking at scripture through different lens after meeting you, honestly. Like I hadn't, I always looked like, these are spiritual things that are different than success. Like, I thought those things were so separate. And it's like, no, like, God wants us to be successful. These things are there. Like, the principles, like, the map is laid out in front of us. The only thing that God ever created that has a choice to not be successful is humans. And the only reason they're not is because they decide to do something other than the fat things that God created them for. Like, rocks? Some can't say, well, I don't feel like shining today. <laughs> What? <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? Right. Water. I'm not going to be wet today. I'm going to be dry. Maybe I'll be wet three weeks from now. This is like everything the guy created does what he created to do, except humans, because we have a choice. Interesting. And that choice is like the greatest gift that God's given us, the choice of accountability. Like we have the ability to choose. You know what else is really interesting? Which it's a tangent, but it's a good one. Um, the difference between a choice and a decision is fascinating. Mm -hmm. I so. Because to choose means to pick one, but to decide comes from the Latin root day, which means over from and side, which means to cut. When you actually make a decision, you cut yourself off from any other possibility. Like I'm cutting off all other options. This is what I will do. This is what my life is going to be about. Nothing is going to stop me from being this person, doing this thing, and I will have this outcome. 
That's a decision. Choice means oh, I'm going to pick one. But you, people make choices and then they change their mind because they choose something else after they choose the. When you make a decision, you burn the ships. There is no there is no regression from a decision. There's only regression from choices. Hmm. So, and, and well, you've already heard me. I'm not going to go into the whole covenant thing, but the whole covenant. It's, it's interestingly enough that the word decide means to cut, but the word covenant also means to cut. So when you make a decision, you're actually entering into a covenant with yourself. And a covenant is the opposite of a contract. A contract is an agreement between two or more individuals based upon a mutual distrust. But a covenant is an agreement between two or more individuals based upon a mutual love and trust. And when you enter into a covenant with somebody, you're literally swearing on your life. I'm going to give everything I have, my time, my effort, my energy, my resources, my life if necessary to protect you and yours. And if I don't keep my promise to you, may what happened to this animal that I sacrificed happen to me. That's a covenant. A person who makes a decision, a real decision, a covenant decision with themselves, they would rather die in honor keeping that promise to themselves than live in dishonor and break it. Which is why you have so many, I don't have confidence. Well, of course you don't have confidence because you're the only person who's ever heard every lie you've ever told. And you've broken your word to yourself so many times in the past you can't believe a word you say. The root word of confidence is confide, which means to trust. You don't trust yourself. Because you've been lying to yourself your whole life and letting yourself off the hook by choosing something different after you already chose something instead of making a decision. Anyway, I do like to rant. <laughs> I love my rants. There's nothing better than my rant. All right. So for those who are watching this now are like, oh, my gosh, I had no idea that the Bible is the success guide. And they want to follow you or even go deeper into the stuff. What's at this place? People? Like, oh, definitely YouTube. I have so many amazingly interesting Bible studies on YouTube. And then I teach business principles, and I teach scientific principles, and like principles of, I geek out on a lot of stuff. So, weirdly enough, I think a part of how God created me was the fact that this dude's going to be so curious. I can't look at something and not wonder how it works. Like, <laughs> I wonder how that works. Right? <laughs> and so, when I was a kid, I used to take stuff apart. Uh, I don't think I've ever told this in public. But my mom was a beautician, so we used to have, she used to have these styrofoam mannequin heads. Uh, I remember one time we got some walkie-talkies, and, right? So, like, I cut the bottom out of this bottom part of the face out of this mannequin head and cut a hole for the mouth, and I put a speaker inside of it, and I put the walkie-talkie down inside of it so I can make the mannequin at all. I just do all kinds of weird, geeky stuff like that. Because I, I loved putting together model cars, and I take them down in the basement and blow up the firecrackers. <laughs> I can't even imagine if I had a cell phone with slow motion back. <laughs> that would have been great. Can you imagine blowing up a model car with slow motion? That would be the greatest thing ever. Anyway, so so I, I just always wonder how things work, and so I, I think I think part of the part of the miracle and the blessing of life is being aware of the fact that there's more that you don't know than there is that you do know, and then looking for those answers. In fact, the scripture says it's the glory of God to conceal a thing. But it's the hour of kings to search out a matter. The interesting thing about that word thing and the word matter in Hebrew, it's the same word. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing. It's the honor of kings to search out a thing or search out a matter. Well, guess what the word thing is? Mm. It's debar, which means to speak. So it's the glory of God to hide things in his word. Not from us, but for us to find. And it's the honor of kings, modern day entrepreneurs, in my opinion, to search them out. Isn't it cool? So cool. So cool. Uh, anyway, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming and hanging out. I appreciate you. Being my first official guest on the YouTube channel. and uh, Hi, pleasure, man. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I can hardly wait to watch it. Thank you for joining us on the Sure Word channel. May the blessings of today's message stay with you. Feel free to engage in the comment section and remember to like, share and subscribe for more uplifting content. Until next time, go and win with Jesus.